I know. In this craft environment, you're like, oh, more things. Yeah. It's different. I'm just telling you it's different. And when you see it, you'll get it. Okay, so one of the things that is important to understand is that this is, in fact, a water-based acrylic paint. Because it is paint, it is opaque. So everything else in the world of distress up till now has always been translucent when we deal with the ink pads, the stains, the markers, those are all going to be translucent. And even though we had picket fence stain, that was only semi-opaque. In other words, even if you put it on, you would still see through it because it was a stain. These, completely opaque paint, but they have very different properties than any other paint. And we make paint. I mean, we have studio paint from Claudine. We have, hey, how are you? We have the Adirondack paint dabbers completely different. So first thing, I did like the dabber system. So I wanted mine in a dabber. But I wanted it to be very different than uh, the traditional paint dabbers, okay? So first thing you're going to notice is that it's very, very fluid. Let me say it's a very fluid paint because it is. Um, my inspiration was vintage milk paint. Milk paint was kind of a powder-based paint that you could add liquid to to get it to a different viscosity. It has some great opaque um, properties to it. So every bottle has a mixing ball in there. So you're going to mix that up. Because it is a dabber, of course you're going to press down, you can apply pressure to the side of the bottle to get the paint to flow, but this is a very fluid paint, okay? Very, very liquid. Now, when you work with this paint, if you put it onto a surface, you have some options. If I want to blend this out, I can go in with my hands, and I can just blend this out, and this will blend out almost like a chalk or a pastel. But if I left it concentrated in areas, I'm going to get the opacity of just regular paint, right? So you get to decide whether you want it to be super opaque or of course if you blend this out to make it translucent. Now, if you don't want to get paint on your hands, that's going to freak you out. Um, there's other things. Obviously, we can go in with our blending tool and we can use blending foam and we can blend this out just the same. You can also use cut and dry foam if you wanted to do that as well. But here's what's really cool about this is that if you like to do a lot of mixed media, if you like to get it all over place, even though this is dry, this paint doesn't stain because it's not a stain, it's not an ink, it's just paint, so it's going to wipe right off with water. Weird. It's just the beginning. <laughs> it's just the beginning. Okay, I'm going to dry this. So I like that color. Drawing this broken china, it's nice, Beautiful. huh? Yeah, it's really pretty. So drying time. Drying time on the paint, uh, if you put it on pretty thin, probably about a minute or so, you can always heat set it. You don't have to heat set it. It doesn't the permanent nature of this paint at all. But what I love about this paint is that when it's on the surface, like when it's on paper like this, and you kind of swipe your finger over it, you don't feel the paint on the paper the way you do with acrylic paint. It's very smooth, it goes right into it. Because this doesn't have any fillers to it. If I go to use a color just on a direct surface, so let's go ahead and go in with Salty Ocean. So if I take some of this paint, this paint is reactive with water. That's what's cool about the stress. You say reactive with water? Yep. So when I get this wet, my paint is actually going to wick out across the surface the same way the ink pads and the stains do. And you can see that the more water you add, the more it's going to react. But it will always maintain its color and texture. So I'm going to get a lot of really cool kind of background effects just from adding water. So let's mix some colors together. Let's go in. I'll use whatever is left there. Take a little picked raspberry. Right now, this is in 24 of the 48 Distress colors because now Distress has 48 colors because we added those seasonal colors that we launched last year as part of the permanent line. So I can just take a whole assortment of colors. We'll go with some bright ones. I can go in, mist this with water because it's going to react with water, take a surface, and I can just go right through the paint. Right now, when I go through the paint, this is going to give it some really interesting effects. So the color, as I dry, it's already going to start to react with itself. So I can dry this to create some really fun marbleized effects. But while it's wet, if I go over with water, I'll get it to react even more. And I don't need tons of water. Every time the water hits it, it's going to react the same way it does with ink. It's very weird. Now again, we could set this aside, let it air dry, but I'm incredibly impatient, so that's why I'm using a tool. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> but I love the way that these paints will marbleize with each other, and they don't turn into mud. That's yes. another great thing about this. So you could even see in there how those colors just actually swirl and marbleize together, whereas regular acrylics, if you go in and you swipe right through, you're going to mix the color and it turns to mud. Now you can mix these. I mean, I could still put colors on my craft sheet, and I could go in and mix them up if I wanted a new color, but 
for these, I'm just kind of kind of create my background. So let me just take this. I normally like to go with a cloth and blot off some of the excess. Get this out of the way. So I always tell people when you're building layers, like it's a good idea to have either a paper towel or some sort of towel handy because sometimes when you're using a lot of water and color, you do get those blob effects. So we want to get some of that off. All right. So I just want to dry this. I see just a little bit of shine right there. This is going to give me a totally matte finish. So once this tag is dry and we've got that great kind of smooth surface, this could be great just as it is. It kind of looks almost like encaustics. So it's got a really funky kind of a wax finish to it. But once this paint is completely dry, I can actually go in and add layers. Layers meaning that if I went over this and I decided to wet it, the colors are not going to re-wet. They're just going to stay with what they are. So your paints aren't going to re-wet once it dries. So just adding water, I don't have to worry about my color change too much. So now it's going to allow me to distress over the paint. People are like, why just spray water again? I'll just to show you that I got it wet. So let's go with some distressed colors so you see what I mean. So if I have this dry, and I went in with my blending tool, and now I went in with my distress pads. Maybe I used my ink pads, maybe I went in with stains, maybe I did anything like that. I can go in. Of course we need to have a little brown. Of course. Of course. No day is complete yeah. without brown. That's right. <laughs> um, but if I wanted to add maybe some brighter shades, so maybe we wanted to go in and we wanted to punch up some of that picked raspberry that was in there, and we wanted to go in and kind of intensify that a little bit. I could do that because my inks are going to be translucent. But the beauty of this, let's add even a little peacock for this. I like that. Find my ink tool. There we are. Let's say I want to add a little bit of that. That's kind of fun teal color. There we go. So once I have ink on there, I could still go with my water and do all the things that we were doing with ink. We can like sprint little water droplets on there because that ink is going to react with water, but my paint will not re-wet. So even if I get water down there, I don't have to worry about this re-wetting into my ink. It's just going to be a layer. <laughs> Which means I can stamp with water, I can kind of let some of this drip down if I wanted to, just to create some other cool effects. I can lift some of that off. So basically what we have is now we've got our ink layer, but where I've added the water, it's just kind of wicked out, allowing the paint to shine underneath. And I mean, you can feel the surface. The surface is smooth as can be. That's what's weird. You'd expect it to be really textured and have a lot of hand to it, and it doesn't. So because this paint is so fluid, it can work on multi-surfaces as well. It'll be permanent on fabric. It will work great on metal, glass, plastic. So if I wanted to go in and let's say alter something, maybe I want to take a piece of metal, I can take this, put some...